Easter. He is risen. You know what? I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm seeing all over Facebook people are putting this, He is risen, He is risen indeed. That's cool. Except for the poor people who've never been to church. They don't have a clue what that means. Did you know that? They see you say that, they don't know what it means. So I got something better for you. Put on Facebook, Happy Easter, my best friend is alive. My best friend died, and he's alive. Because I hope he's your best friend. Because that's what it's all about. He wants to be your best friend. And making Jesus your best friend. And that's why we're here today to celebrate my best friend's alive. So stand and sing with us. Jim Hildreth had a part 
in our Easter thing today, and he is being replaced by Steve Stiverson. So pray for Steve as he's trying to come up and get this done. He's been practicing all morning. And, but Jim uh, has got some kind of flu or sinus infection. The doctors say it's a flu. Jim says it's a sinus infection. I'm not getting in the middle. We just know he's sick. So uh, please uh, be praying for both of those situations. And today, you know, we always pray for a couple of churches, but today we're going to pray for all the churches today and just be praying that all the churches today are full. You know, we, we, we joke a lot. In the ministry business, there's the two-timers. And people say, what's the two-timers? And that's the people that you see on Christmas and Easter. And, you know, we hope that we're full of people. We hope that every church is full of people that come on Christmas and Easter today. Because it's a chance to share the gospel. It's a chance to hear about Jesus. So we praise God for that. We want every church to be full today. Not just our church. We want to pray that every church is full and that people are hearing the message and thinking. Because I tell you, times have changed. I heard something today I never thought I would ever hear. I went home to, to get Sammy up a little while ago. And when I came out the back door, Easter Sunday, somebody was mowing. And I'm like, that's really sad. Mowing on Easter Sunday. But it's part of our world today. So we just ask that God will touch hearts and bless hearts and that people will have wonderful services hearing about Jesus today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you this morning just so excited as today is the day of resurrection, the day that Jesus uh, rose from the dead after three days in the grave. We know what that means to us, the hope that it gives us and the joy. And, and one of the things that Jesus has told us to do is when we have problems to come to him. And we're sick or ill to come to him. And Lord, we ask that you be with Jim's cousin Joyce and Jim Hildreth and all the people that are on our prayer list, as there are so many. And ask that you would be with each and every person that we're praying for and heal their bodies and help them to grow strong. Lord, we ask that you would be with um, the churches today, the area churches and all the churches in the world as we celebrate. That new people would come and they would hear about you and their lives would be touched. And Lord, they would want to know you further. And Lord, we just praise you for this and ask that you will uh, bless them and many will come to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Which microphone to use at times? I'm sorry. Mike has me scared to death. When I first come to this church, they hook this microphone up to me. Mike Sturgeon, our bass player and sound man, told me that if I turn this mic on and this mic on at the same time, that the church will explode <laughs> and everybody will be severely injured. I don't know anything about sound equipment, and Mike's really good with it. So for 14 years now, I have lived with that fear. And he laughs. He thinks it's funny. Look at him. Oh, don't quit laughing. I know you're laughing. But anyway, today we're going to talk about a risen Savior. And what does it mean to me? You know, if you come up to, to somebody and they just walked up to you and said, Okay, Jesus rose from the dead. What does it mean to you? How quick do you come up with something? How fast can words come out of your mouth? What do you say? How do you answer that question? And when you answer that question, it's a testimony. And, and it's, what is testimony? You know, the churches used to be filled with testimony time. It used to be packed. You'd come up to people and say, hey, you want to come up and talk about what Jesus has done for you? And there'd be a line. Now you go to people and say, you want to talk about what Jesus has done for you? And they point at me and say, that's what he gets paid for. I don't want to bear. I'm not saying nothing about it. I'm not, you know, that's, that's, that's not my bag. I don't do that. And why not? Why can't we tell what has happened to you? There's a change in us. You know, when we start following Christ, there's an improvement in our life. We start driving Maseratis and we live in mansions that are $14 million, right? No, it's not that kind of change. We just have a comfort. We have a peace that is in us for what Jesus has done for us. We have a feeling that we're never alone. 
We have experiences that we tell about maybe a near-death experience and how Jesus got us through. Maybe something that happened in our family that Jesus gets us through. We have all these different things. And we tell people just what Jesus has done for us. And the Word tells us this. John 17, verses 1 through 5. After Jesus had finished speaking to his disciples, he looked up towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come for you to bring glory to your Son, in order that he may bring glory to you. And you gave him power over all people, so that he would give eternal life to everyone you give him. Eternal life is to know you, the only true God, and to know Jesus Christ, the one you sent. I have brought glory to you here on earth by doing everything you gave me to do. Now, Father, give me back the glory that I had with you before the world was created. Jesus is talking about being with God and the glory that he has and about glorifying God. And our desire is to glorify Jesus. And we see this in the Word.
I've seen a lot of people, they'll go to Kroger and they'll buy $50 in lotto tickets. And uh, their hope is in the lotto. And I think that'd be pretty sad if you spent all that money on the lotto tickets and the numbers rolled out and you didn't win. Wouldn't that be hard? Uh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And people have strange things they put their hope in. And Jesus praying on the night before his crucifixion in John 17, 24 through 26, said, Father, I want everyone you have given me to be with me wherever I am. Then they will see the glory that you've given me because you loved me before the world was created. Good Father, the people of this world don't know you, but I know you and my followers know that you sent me. I told them what you were like, and I will tell them even more. Then the love that you have for me will become part of them, and I will be one with them. To think the hope, Jesus wants everyone to be with him. I want everybody to be with me. Wow, God wants me to be with him. That's unbelievable. I, I'm not worthy to be with God. That's the thought process that mankind gets through, isn't it? I'm not worried to be with God. Are you trying to tell me that God wants to be with me? See, we, the world likes a God that is trying to come up with reasons why you can't be with Him, right? That's what you hear constantly. Oh, you can't be with God because of this. You can't be with God because of this. And Jesus said that He came to glorify God by bringing everybody to Him. And what hope that is. We now have a testimony from Bernadette Brown. And um, I guess I'm trying to explain or tell you how I'm hoping I do this. <laughs> Anyways, um, I grew up Catholic. I always knew God and I always knew Jesus. But there's a disconnect. And there always had been. You know, I had uh, God in my life many times and then not so much. Um, but you seek out God when you need him the most. It seems almost like cheating because you feel like you should be faithful all along. However, you don't always know that you need him until you really need him. Uh, at one point in my life, um, I had a seven-year-old daughter. I had a two-year-old daughter. And um, I was going through a divorce. It was very ugly. Um, but I was also going through a child custody battle with both fathers in two different counties. I was court ordered to stay in Columbus so I couldn't even seek out help from my family members because they all lived far away. God found and put people in front of me every day. I struggled and I was scared and mine was tight, but God put people in front of my life in front of me. Every time something else came up, I barely had furniture, I barely had anything for an apartment, but he put things in front of me to make it work. I realized then that something was missing in my life, and I realized that God was putting people in front of me to give me hope and to keep me going, because the most important thing in my life at that time was my children, and I needed to be there for them and be strong. My life I had to gather for them. Um, and I was so grateful. Um, I ended up finding a small group, study group, and I didn't have much money back then, so I really couldn't do much for entertainment. And the study group actually we had every other weekend, every other Friday, and I could bring my kids, and the kids could play, and they had somebody watching the kids. And the adults went downstairs and actually did our study group and socialized and it actually helped encourage me and kept me moving. During that time, we weren't going to church, we were just going to study group. And um, my oldest daughter said, Mom, I really like these people. Can we go to the church? I said, sure. So we started going to the church. Um, I started reading the Left Behind series books, which were wonderful. I highly recommend them. And at the time, they were actually doing revelations at the church, so it was so much easier for me to understand what was going on because I was getting a practical view of it as well. And one time while we were, they were doing the service, and I was sitting there, highlighting my Bible and listening 
all of a sudden I had the most overwhelming sense, and I understood. It finally clicked, and I realized how much God loved me, and I felt Him fill me, and I started crying. Because I never felt so much love, I never realized how much God loved me, and all those pieces just fit together, and I realized that the emptiness in me was the God-shaped hole in my life that finally I let him fill me. And uh, I want people to realize the biggest thing that you can do is if you find somebody that's struggling and you have the opportunity, be them, there for them. Drop them hints, remind them how much God loves them. Do the things you can to help them because because of all of those people in my life, they help me truly find a relationship with God. And that's what's gotten me through. It's given me hope. It's made me happy again. It's given me so much of my life. And you can do that for them too, in little ways. And I guess that's the main part of it.